Hi there and welcome to a new video in which we will actually get to a, a, to explain delta time inside of the code engine because a lot of times you may see a lot of people that just explains delta as as it appears in the documentation the functions delta parameter is the time elapsing seconds since the previous call to process use this parameter to make calculations independent of the frame rate and lots of other things that may sound too technical and then you don't really understand what is going on so in this video i want to show you a practical example on how to actually use delta time uh, in a project what effect it has once again in a practical project because lots of times for these more advanced topics uh, theory is not enough or maybe it is enough for some people but it's not uh, as easy to understand as possible so indeed in this code of game we have lots of things uh, going on okay now um places in where we are using delta time are for example in the vehicles themselves so if i go to a vehicle scene as well as they just have an area, okay, uh, some particles, a sprite, and a collision shape. This basically allows the vehicle with also this code to basically move left, okay. There's also some extra logic such as setting a random sprite, okay, to the vehicle so that we don't always have the same car, so we just have a, a collection of them, but that's uh, completely out of the tutorial. You will also see maybe some extra logic here, such as global speed plus extra speed, but this doesn't really matter. Once again, you can just consider this as if we were just multiplying delta by the speed or the other way around, speed times delta. That, that is a code that probably you have seen a lot. Or even if you are just modifying the position and not the specific axis of the, of the position, you may have seen something like, um, for example, a position plus equal a certain direction times a certain speed for example and for all these cases and of course times delta <laughs> and in all these cases the delta usage and how it works is exact same one first of all what i want to do is to directly delete delta from here so that we will start to see what effect it actually has in our game so let's press play let's press play over there again and okay where are our vehicles what I can actually do is to directly pause the game, go to the remote tab, and here under vehicles container, where the vehicles are being initiated, I can actually take a look at them and see what is going on. And the problem here is that, for example, this vehicle, its X position is in minus, I don't know, 8 million or something that's even bigger. <laughs> so, of course, we cannot see this vehicle. And in reality, if we um, resume the game, we can see that it's like going to huge numbers, okay? And the same thing with the other uh, vehicles, okay? If we go to the X position, uh, so you can see they are super outside of the screen. But in reality, if we just multiply this speed by delta, okay? Now it will work um, as it should. So what is exactly going on? And I believe that the pretty good way of, uh, of starting to realize these things um, is first of all to just print the delta parameter. Okay, so that here factually we can see how much is this value all the time. So if we uh, start the game, we're going to see the print over there. So as you can see, it's a super low number. Where does this super small number come if you want to know? If we go to a whiteboard over here, you will see it is the time elapsed in seconds since the previous call to process, which remembers process, okay, is called at every frame. And what this means, okay, is that remember that games run at a certain um, FPS, okay? So let me actually explain it over here. So what happens is that your game, okay, runs at a certain FPS or frames per second. And remember that functions, in this case, the process function is called one time in each frame, in each frame, basically. And I know this may sound a little bit confusing, but what happens is that if we have a PC, okay, PCs actually, that for example, we have one PC that is 60, that runs the games at 60 frames per second, and another PC that runs the same game, but at 240 FPS, for example, so of course this PC or actually this PC is probably more expensive. It has better components, etc., that makes the game run at a much higher frame rate. So in this PC, what happens according to this um, to, to this theory over there is that in this PC process will be called sixty times, but in other PC it's going to be called 
240 times. And remember that what we are actually doing over here in our code is that, okay, every time that this process function is called, in this case, 60 times per second, and in this one, 240 times per second, it basically move left, okay, the car in this case. So if in one PC, in one second, we have moved the car 60 times, okay, once again, this is just one second, and this is again, just one second, what will happen is that user A, okay, let's say that this is user A and this is user B, user A, here user B would have moved much more than user A because it has moved the vehicle uh, 240 times, whereas layer A would have moved it just 60 times. So there you see the first downside, okay? And also what you're seeing is that we are executing this code like lots of times per second, okay? So in reality, what we are doing here is, in this case, well, the speed is not maybe so clear, okay? So I will just multiply this by, I don't know, uh, 50.0, okay? And we'll see this new velocity or, or even a little bit more just to see it. So here you can see, okay, this, we are multiplying by delta. So in reality, uh, what you can see over here is that we are decreasing position x minus equal delta times 1000. So what happens is that if you take your vehicle, okay, and you go to the X position and you decrease it by 1000, as you can see, it is like mostly disappearing of the screen. And remember that we have just executed delta once. So in reality, as you can see over here, this is executed at every frame. So imagine doing this exact same calculation, but 60 times per second or 240 times per second. You have to multiply this by 60, okay? And in just one second, I'm talking about. There you can see how we start to get those huge numbers that we were getting a second ago. So how does Delta avoid this from happening? Remember that Delta is a super a small value. So for example, here, the time between frames was this one. And if we take this value, okay, and multiply by 1000, now 1000 is much smaller. So if we do it minus um, 1000 times, let's do it uh, 0.003, which is, well, this value approximately, now we've only moved three units, as you can see. And if we move three units every frame, it makes much more sense than moving 1000 uh, units per frame. So now I believe that you can actually start to understand a little bit more what Delta is actually doing without having to dig deeper into more complicated stuff. And also another way of um, seeing how this affects the game is by going to any script. I recommend that it is a script that is only played once, such as a main script here or something like that. And in the start, okay, if you have a, sorry, a ready method uh, that I really, I don't have here one, no, I don't. So let me quickly add one. So func ready, what you can do is call engine dot max FPS and modify the maximum frame rate, okay? So let's set max FPS to 60. You won't feel this, I believe, in the video recording, but I will feel it, okay? So now the game is running at a maximum of 60 FPS, okay? Uh, and what, as you can see, is that the game will work in the exact same way. But what happens if I make the frame, the, this is like a pretty standard frame rate, but there could be worse PCs that run this game at just 30 FPS. So let's see how these people would actually see the game. Now, as you can see, I believe that you should be able to see in the recording. So as you can see, the game still works like pretty similarly. Basically, the velocity of the vehicle is always the same one. So you can see it takes something like one second. Uh, let's count it. Uh, one, two, yeah, something like two seconds to go from point A to point B. And this is thanks to Delta once again. But what happens if we go now to the vehicle once again? So where is my vehicle? And instead of multiplying by Delta, I don't multiply it by Delta. And I want to make the speed actually 1000 because if not, you have seen what would happen. Okay, so let's make it much, much smaller. Something maybe like, I don't know, maybe 0.5 or I don't know if even 0.5 would be like maybe too low. Uh, but let's see it. We are we are at 30 FPS. So let's try to see it. Maybe it's too low. I, I don't really know. Or or even it's too much. I don't know. So let's to verify this, go to remote, vehicles, vehicle zero. And the position, once again, it's no, it's not too much. It's actually on the right all the time. It is decreasing. 
and there as you can see we can see the pyramid but it's too low 0.5 so let's make it 5 so now we should see something much better and let's try to count how much time it takes to go from vehicle from the vehicle from here to here so there we got it so it's still too too low so let's make it something bigger maybe 15 so I've set the velocity to 15, which is, I think, a good value. And let's see, 3, 4, 5, let's say something like 5 seconds, okay? Let's try to count them again. 2, 3, 4, yeah, something like 4 or 5 seconds approximately, okay? But what happens if now we make the max FPS 60, okay? So double, and we keep the same speed without using delta. And now let's try to count it, okay? But we don't know how to count it, you will see that it's going much faster, okay? So there you got it, it's something like 2.5 seconds, so exactly half uh, of the time. So 1, 2, yes, 2.5 maybe, and previously we used to have 5. So as you can see, the velocity is not the same one because of, of this. So in this case, what were the results that we were getting? Let me put this in another color. So for case of uh, 30 FPS, we were taking something like four to five seconds. Whereas at 60 FPS, the vehicle was taking something like two to 2.5 seconds. And here you can find the exact relationship that I wanted uh, to, to mark. You can see that at 30 FPS, well, the maximum was something like five seconds and at 60, it was half of it. And we'll actually do the exact same thing if we go and compare it to the minimum, approximately, once again, that we were getting. And why is that? That we are taking half of the time because at 60, okay, FPS, we are calling delta 60 times per second, whereas in this one we are calling, sorry, process 60 times and in this one just 30 times. So, once again, here we are just moving the vehicle 30 times per second. Okay, and in this one, we are moving the vehicle 60 times per second. So it's exactly double, okay, in this case. And this is the reason why we're getting here half of the results or we are getting double the time, the time difference. So it's exactly um, the double of these uh, values. Once again, this is without multiplying by delta. But if we go over here to a vehicle and now we do multiply this value by delta, Okay, what is going to happen is that we get this result uh, like always the exact same time. Now I will have to increase significantly this speed because if I just play like this, let's wait until we have some vehicles spawned over here. So let me go to main and here vehicles, I already have one. What you will see is that well, the position, we see it appearing, but it is super low. What is happening? Remember Delta is something like, it really depends, but something like 0.003. And we have seen that if we multiply any number by 0.003, we're just going to be moving super slow. So now I would have to make it much bigger, maybe something like 1,500, maybe, okay. Um, and now we should see, well, maybe it's too fast, so it's not enough for us to count it. Um, so let's make it 600, okay. And let's also check at how many FPS we are currently running. So in this case, I am at 60 FPS. And then, we, then we will do the test with 30 FPS. And let's try to count it. Come on, give me a vehicle. Well, now we are not being lucky enough. There we go. Something like two seconds, maybe. Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, something like three seconds. And now let's make ma max FPS 30. Okay, and you will see the exact same result. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. So as you can see, it's mostly the exact same uh, speed. And in reality, if we were counting it mathematically, okay, we would actually get the exact same result or quite similar. And now let's even go lower. So let's make it 10 frames per second. We're going to be seeing probably this super laggy, but it's the idea, okay? So now let's try to get to a vehicle. One, two, three. Well, it would have been three, but it was impossible to move. Um, and now let's do the opposite. Let's make the max FPS 1,000. My PC may not even reach 1,000 FPS because it's too much, but just for you to see it, okay? One, two, three. One, two, three. So in this case, 
the the FPS didn't really matter. We were always getting this in something like three seconds. So it didn't really matter if we were playing at 10 FPS or if we were at a thousand FPS. We were always getting three. And that's the the real magic of the, of Delta. And this is what really uh, matters of Delta and what actually stated here in the documentation that is the important thing. But once again, if you don't see it like this, it's quite complicated. Basically, um, here to make calculations independent of the frame rate. So for example, you should always multiply a speed value by Delta to animate a moving object. To animate is not only like to add an animation, but also to animate means to add a, a movement to an object that doesn't have movement, okay? So that's why over there in the vehicle, the correct formula will be speed times Delta. And also once again, here I'm just modifying one axis, but the full formula, if you wanted to modify a position, because this would be a vector two, would be also a direction times your speed, times delta and once again you can modify the order of these values as well because it is a multiplication and if you like my explanations and you want to continue learning godot you can't miss my uh, full godot course of as you can see six hours in which we create in detail the game that i showed you it's just two days left at this price of uh, 13 dollars and the original price is 45 dollars so it's a huge discount so if you use the link in the description down below you will be able to get it for this amusing price but once again just two days left so i'd really hurry up and also if you don't use godot i also have my own unity course once again original price 45 dollars uh, but uh, it is at 13 right now two days left at this price it is in this case a 22 hour course so much longer much more comprehensive and you can see that it, this already have students. This one doesn't have any reviews because the students are still taking the course because it is, of course, super long. And the Goto course already has 30 students, six ratings, and an average of 4.8 reviews. So I'm sure that you are going to be enjoying and learning a lot. So enroll right now, and I will see you there.